we have to understand it's not just Proverbs that presents that question. So does Ecclesiastes. So does the Song of Solomon. It's not just Proverbs. Solomon is incredible in a number of ways. One, in the Song of Solomon, he typifies Christ. But in other contexts, the mark of the beast, the number of the beast, occurs twice in connection with Solomon. Twice. So in one passage, he, or in one context, he prefigures Christ and another Antichrist, a very complicated figure. Now, the fact that he has that kind of wisdom and he was able to fall away, this teaches something about Antichrist. Nonetheless, Jesus spoke of him favorably in the New Testament. Jesus said that someone greater than Solomon is here. Not even Solomon adorned uh, in all of his splendor was like the, um, I'm thinking in Hebrew now, the uh, Shoshanat Hashanah, like the Rose of Sharon. Uh, consider the lilies of the field. It's the original language in Greek translates from the Hebrew. It's not lilies as we think. It's a different, a different flower that's very, very beautiful and colorful. Uh, Jesus makes positive mention of him. We can conclude then that he did repent at some point before his death. Additionally, we have to understand the promise to King David concerning him would imply that God had his hand on him despite his terrible, terrible, unspeakable sin. It is my belief, based on the way that Jesus spoke of him in the New Testament, interpreting the Old Testament in light of the New and in light of the words of Jesus, the direct references of Jesus concerning Solomon, that he did repent before he gave up the ghost. That is why. But it's more important to remember that the Word of God <clears throat> is the Word of God. It's not just the word of Solomon. Solomon was the vehicle that God wrote these books through, but it was God's word in the word of Solomon. Uh, let it be a warning to the rest of us. God can use us. God can speak through us. But we can also veer off into tremendous sin. It would appear Solomon did repent. It would appear. So it would appear. Um, He's not the only character like that. There was a character who God plainly spoke through when Absalom died to King David, who then likewise went off, if you were to read the account in Samuel. There are other people like that. They seem to be right, and then they go off. King Joash was another. We don't make determinations about their eternal salvation. But we can say that even though God blessed them, used them, maybe even spoke to them, that was not a guarantee that they would always be right with the Lord. Neither is that the case with us. The Lord may bless us and use us. But what does Paul say? He warned of the danger of being disqualified himself after he preached to others. Again, let it be a warning to all of us. Work out our salvation in fear and trembling. Not terror, but certainly with a holy fear, a fear of God. Um, but in conclusion concerning Solomon, what I would encourage the inquirer to do is to look at what the New Testament says about him. That would pretty well indicate that ultimately he was saved. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Fash. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Fash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale 
that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morial catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you. Thank you.